Well, I'll tell you what we need to do, though, is, like, we have to get some good Sally Field lines because <gasps> she really nailed some of those, like, lines as a mom. Love her. Stupid is, stupid does. I literally wrote, I was like, Sally Field, you national treasure. <laughs> Hope <laughs> Nicholas Cage comes and steals you, you beautiful angel. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sisters, sisters who seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who seen it. Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, 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 sisters. Sisters who seen it. Hello! Hi there. Welcome back. How's everyone doing? How we doing? Hope you're all doing well, feeling well, having a good time. You don't have a lot of snow like I do. Oh, lots of snow. It's a lot. Wait, how much is there where you are? A ton. It's like up to my thigh. Ugh. Oh, that's more than us. Okay. I shouldn't complain then. But I mean, it's Chicago, right? That's what people think of Chicago. Now I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess it gets cold here. <laughs> Yeah, Midwest. Northern Midwest? Mm, no. Well, because like Michigan and Minnesota and that's up there. That's some Fargo territory. Oh, 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 okay. All right. So we are the Sisters Who Seen It, the podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological, ethical, and familiar lens. I'm Katie. I'm Bridget. And I just started running. <laughs> and I kept on running forever. <laughs> well, not forever. He runs, I don't know how long he runs, like three years, I think, or something crazy. Three years, two months, oh my 14 God. days, and 16 <laughs> hours. And somebody calculated it that if he started in Alabama, he'd end up in Utah after 1,171 <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> Who has time to do that? Okay. Our movie is Force Gump. And we can thank the one and only fan, Miss <gasps> Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. This is a good pick. It's a good pick, but I didn't expect the reaction I had to this movie. What was your reaction? I don't know if I like it as much. <gasps> That's so interesting. Did you cry? Like when the mom died and he was burying Jenny. Yeah. It's a lot of tears. I don't know. I mean, yeah, at parts, but not, I don't know. I kind of was a little bit more of like, I don't know if this lands as well in 2021. There's definitely some parts that I was like, (laughs) oh, that's inaccurate. And not just the (laughs) fictional parts, like the parts (laughs) that I think they were like, no, no, this is real, guys. And you're like, but like, is it? Is it? It's not. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, Wendy, who suggested this, is a runner. And she, like, runner. could probably run for three years. Uh, let me just go back to it really quick. Three years and <laughs> two months, 14 days, 16 hours. Wow, she'd probably grow a really cool beard if she did that, I Can bet. I tell you, at that scene, I was like, whoa, Castaway Tom Hanks. <gasps> I literally, I'm not joking, I wrote that. Hold on, now I have to find the exact line I wrote because I wrote basically that. I said, now he looks like his castaway character. (laughs) That was my note. (laughs) Also, we're going to have to talk about that scene later on because there's a Bob scene around there. Oh, I can't wait. I'll hold back on that. So I discovered something interesting. Mm -hmm. If you watch Forrest Gump on Amazon Prime, they have like a trivia section. Oh. Ooh, that's fun. I didn't know that. And it shoots you to the scene. Oh. So it goes like scene one, continuity era, blah, 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 blah. Scene two. Wait, this is like during the movie? You can like interrupt it and play trivia? You don't play trivia. It's like them informing you of the movie. And I was like, I understand the tech underlords are controlling our every thought, but like (laughs) I'm watching this for our podcast and now you're giving me like literal notes by scene. I don't know what's happening, but if Amazon comes out with a sisters who've seen it, they stole it from us, and that's what's happening. 
<laughs> yeah, that would be distracting. Well, I turned it off. I, I just was like, yeah. whoa. It was just, I just didn't even know it was a feature. And especially for us, because I always look that stuff up. It was pretty convenient. I thought you were going to say that the movie was censored, kind of, because my version was, because I watched it on, like, I guess TV. So I guess they just, like, censor. But what? what pg-13 or something like it's really not that i don't i mean what's the censored part they changed like curses Uh, and you don't see like i guess as much like blood maybe they would just cut away quicker okay and i just remember the one part where it's so weird he gets like on the stage with all the war protesters (laughs) and then he was like that guy liked to say the f word a lot and then like the guy is saying it but the movie was like no no not for you to hear I'm like, what? I'm an adult. What children are watching Forrest Gump? Come on. Yeah, you're like, um, I'm confused. It was strange. Doesn't seem like a movie you would need to bleep stuff out. Oh, but don't worry. They don't bleep out the inappropriate adult sexy time that happens in the beginning of the movie. That's all in there. Noises and everything. I hate all of that. So let me know how that makes any sense. Exactly. As you're speaking, I'm trying to look up this feature. It's called X-Ray in the top left corner. And if you watch anything on Amazon Prime, it just literally goes through general trivia. Like right now, do you want to know one of the facts? Yeah. Tom Hanks was not paid for this film. Instead, (laughs) he took percentage points, which ultimately netted him about $40 million. And is that more or less than he would have made? No idea. The movie okay. itself made like $600 million plus. So that would have been funny if they were like, Tom, we're not going to pay you, but don't worry. We're going to give you this really cool ping pong paddle with some guy's <laughs> face on it. And you get your own cardboard cutout with your <laughs> eyes closed. <laughs> because every picture of him, he had his eyes closed. Okay, should we do synopsis? Yeah, I want you to do it. This is by far the hardest movie ever to do a synopsis. Definitely. Covers a lot of years. There's no way I can get into details. So yeah, it is. And I actually want to ask you this because I feel like you know the correct term. We're not calling him stupid. No. We're not calling him mentally challenged. No, that's not. What are we calling him? So I'm at a loss. I guess you could say he has like developmental disabilities. That could be maybe the most okay. most correct term because another possibility is what used to be considered mentally retarded is not appropriate anymore. So now it's instead kind of been coupled with a term called intellectually disabled. Okay. But in order to be intellectually disabled, it's not just that you have a lower IQ to some degree. It's also that you adaptively struggle. So like you're not able to take care of yourself or do basic things that someone your age should be able to do. And like, I don't think he fits that because no way. he like bought a boat and just like yeah. getting shrimp. Get out of here. Right. So like I would say he just has some cognitive delays and by delay it just means that you're not able to think as a typical person your age normally would. Is it offensive to call him slow? Probably. Okay. But when you think of academics, that's a pretty common term because sometimes that's just what it is. It just means that it takes you a little longer to understand things. Okay. And not that you'll never be able to, but that it's just not going to come as easily as it would to someone else who doesn't. The challenges. I will tell you though, they hammered so hard the IQ of 75 and like like, yeah, that's low, but like that is not the lowest you can go. Average is about 85. That's a low average, but that's an average because there's ranges. So it's an interesting number they picked for, for him to kind of focus on. And I bet they didn't consult any school psychologists on that. And they just kind of picked a random number. There's a really good George Carlin line that's like, think of the average American and how dumb they are. And now I think 50% of people are dumber than that. In my mind, that's what they were trying to do. They're like, he's not here. He's here, but he's only five away from here. And oh I'm my like, God. what? Okay, anyway, so there is a man who lives in Greensboro, Alabama. Did I get that right? Sure. Okay, whatever. 
He's in Alabama. And at this point, he's at a bus stop. And (laughs) he is the guy that everyone wears big, giant headphones and runs from. Boy, did I think of that. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Dre headphones, everyone around him. Like, we could could actually edit it and put those on and just make him silent. And it would be more realistic. This is the guy you don't make eye contact with. You don't make eye contact. It's the guy on the plane. I would put my headphones in and play nothing. Just so it was like, (laughs) we're not speaking. He starts to tell his whole life story and he's just kind of talking. And as he tells his whole life story, we start to actually then cut to scenes where we see it from a little boy all the way until he's back on this bench. And Mm -hmm. we essentially watch his entire life unfold all within these like major American milestones. Yeah. Wow. The convenience of it all. The convenience (laughs) of it all, how he just falls into millions of dollars and falls into everything just working out as he just kind of like is somebody that I don't know just kind of you could say he's in the right place at the right time you could say that he just doesn't get distracted by other stuff you could say that this movie is full of garbage but I think that if this entire movie and and it's based off of a book that I think it's called the same it's the same title Forrest Gump I think it's the book title yeah and it makes more sense as a book right because it's like Mm -hmm. this seems like a book came into a movie and you just watched this man throughout his life. I think that the part of him being slower is what makes him kind of end up in these crazy circumstances and the fact that he prevails is when I was younger, at least, what I thought was like fun about this movie. And now being older, I'm like, oh, it's a little dangerous. I was getting vibes like that too. Like when he joins the army, I'm like, oh, that's so messed up that they're just kind of like, I mean, the army, I think, did that especially around the time of the Vietnam War because they were just getting anyone. But it's like he just graduated college, which is like then normally when you would think, oh, you're going to go get a job and like start your life. And you're like, never mind. You're going to go to the army. JK, JK, LOL. Bye. Yeah. So I can't even do it justice because there's so much that happens. And I would ask for you to help me fill in the gaps. Like what are the big important things people need to know about this movie? Well, there's a whole thing about like, and it's really a theme throughout the whole movie is like this idea of like running, like he's really good at running. And when he was a little boy, he had these leg braces because he had what I'm assuming is scoliosis. Yeah. <laughs> Scoliosis. <laughs> because his back wasn't straight, so they gave him leg braces. I don't know why he didn't get a back brace, but he got leg braces. And then they just magically break off because there's so many magic things that are magic in the magic movie. And so then he's a really great runner. And then that gets him into college and he's on a football team literally just because he can run. Don't know what he majored in. I would love to know. Me too. I really would love to know. I hope it was like fashion or something <gasps> like just so so ridiculous stop it that sounds so fun Forrest Gump the fashion merchandising major yeah like he ended up designing a shirt later in life he so really did. I'm just saying or like a marketing major <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> he then like from college he literally gets recruited literally the day of his graduation it's so uncomfortable I hate it so much and he doesn't understand things well so like that I hated and so then he's in the army and he goes to the Vietnam War and he meets this guy that he becomes good friends with who was like into shrimp there's a lot of that and then from there he becomes like a war hero then there's a ping pong subplot I just, it's a lot and then it was kind of like the follow up of the Vietnam War and how people reacted and things like that and the whole like he becomes a famous shrimping captain but all throughout the one main thing you didn't necessarily mention was throughout all these periods of his life uh, there's one girl mm. that he loves her name is Jenna 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 me Jenna do we like know her peas last name? and carrots oh I don't know her last name it's just Jenna you could sit here if you want uh so nice be nice to people on the bus guys oh my god mm. can't sit here I hate that me too it's a lot of mean kids in this movie yeah. <laughs> like a lot <laughs> So I read a lot about how it kind of like pushes conservative ideals. You know, he's like a football player and goes into the army and he makes millions of dollars just by I working can see that. 
par dot 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 question mark in just kind of how Jen A Jen A questions the system and she's a hippie and so she's just you know her <laughs> life doesn't work out for her and people talked about how don't follow that route you oh, know or you'll so- end up Dead. Oh my god. And when it came out, like obviously Tom Hanks and all them were like, whoa, 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 we're not trying to do that. No, it's not like it's apolitical. Makes that connection. No. If you read it, that apparently was a thing. I felt like it was just a lot of American ideals because like the football oh, and then the army and then like the making money, which I guess are kind of equated to like more conservative viewpoints or like she was a victim of trauma and you're telling me that like the reason her life sucked was because she chose to be hippie no it's because her dad sucked Alabama. that's why and because people didn't step in sooner yeah messed up <laughs> okay so this is a super random tangent but okay. the woman who is the bus driver is <gasps> from our hometown and it's do you know who that is bridge she's the heir Igor from Air men in <laughs> You want some sugar water? Yep. Why didn't she age? She got a new haircut. So Why is she the same person well, when um, Forrest is a kid and then Forrest is little Forrest is a kid? How's that possible? Can I? Well, what is her skin routine? Maybe she's a vampire. Maybe she's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. You know how many movies could do so well with a Men in Black crossover? What was the? We just. I feel like we talked about another one. We were like, this should be. Oh, we did that with Clue. We were like, this would be perfect with Men in Black because the Men in Black come in. They're all aliens. I'm telling you guys. It's like so real. I liked how she was nice, though, at least. I don't know if she called him stupid. Probably, unfortunately. She goes, what are you, stupid or something? And then he goes, the best line. He goes, stupid is and stupid does. And then she just kind of dropped it. Well, at least she was just, you know, come on in and welcome. She bothered me later on. I mean, she did some messed up stuff. The bus driver? What? She wasn't even no. in the movie. <laughs> Janet. I'm talking about the bus driver. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's why I was confused. <laughs> no, I liked how the bus driver was nice to him. Oh, okay, yes. we can talk about Jenny though. <laughs> Because so she, there was a lot with her. And you know, she is Princess Buttercup <gasps> from Princess Bride. That's her, Robin Wright. Wait, Princess Buttercup? Who? From the Princess Bride, the movie. I gotta look this up. What? With Carrie Elways, you sicko? I just remember her from uh, House of Cards. Well, she was in that too. And she's also Wonder Woman's mom. True she story. is Wonder Woman's mom. Oh, yes. bad decision there. Well, wow. not bad for the first one. <laughs> There she is, Princess Buttercup. Why do you not remember The Princess Bride? I'm offended. That's a romance movie, you sicko. (laughs) And it's got Carrie Always. I don't know, Kate. This is why we have this podcast. Okay. Well, anyway. Okay, so we acknowledge the fact that nobody would listen to Forrest Gump at a bus stop at all. And even though, like, people keep changing, the first woman was like, please leave me alone. But she, like, was... Some, she wasn't like mean and told him to shut up. Right. Then he got more and more people to actually pay attention. And I just kept thinking, that's not how that works. No. More and more people move away from you when you're the person at the bus stop telling your life story that nobody asked for. Except the Bob scene, which was the oh. old lady who is literally sitting there for so long. <laughs> and when he then is talking about like the running. <laughs> so he goes, so I just started running. And then he like talks about first I ran down the road and then I ran through the town and then I decided to just run through the county and so he like does five to six sentences reiterating that he was running and then it cuts to the lady <laughs> and she's very close to the camera and she goes you just started running <laughs> and like she had these really scary bug eyes and I hated it and I didn't understand why 0.5 seconds of my time was wasted <laughs> on that and I didn't like what it. What if she had like a totally different line that she couldn't get and then they were like <laughs> just, fine we'll take it. Just repeat literally <laughs> what he's already said 800 times in case someone missed it. I don't understand. That was the oh weirdest God, scene to me. I know what you're talking about. It was oh so God. weird. And like I guess it was supposed to show oh, okay here's someone who's actually invested but like don't do that. I don't need that well, ever again. And then at the end she's like where are you trying to go? You don't need a bus. It's right there and he yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait, so this 
entire movie is about a guy at a bus stop that nobody wants to listen to his story talks and he didn't need to be at the bus stop? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That could be, like, literally a Dr. Dre Beats commercial. Of like, oh, God. Do you got your beats? And it's just Tom Hanks <laughs> talking his life story. story. <laughs> I love it. It could also be a good commercial for chocolates because <laughs> I'm into right. it. I'm into it. He did offer that first lady chocolates, though. So at least, like, if you're going to be annoying, like, bring food. So that's my motto. That's true. That's a good motto. Yeah. Because laugh is like a box of chocolates. Mm. You never know what you're going to get. I feel like I wrote some Alabama eighth grade, like, graduation speech about that. <gasps> really? Yeah. I th- It was, like, an assignment where it was, like, everyone write a graduation speech for eighth grade, and then one person would get picked. And I was like, this is stupid. And I was like, I'm going to write about those chocolates from Forrest <laughs> I like chocolate. And I was like, sometimes you have crunchy ones. Sometimes they're smooth. Anyway, we're all different. And like, most of my schooling was me just being annoying. Oh, you gotta find that. Oh, God, I loved it. You were like, I'm too smart for this. Here's my chocolate speech. Okay, so I have to just get out the racist stuff because I was really, really jarred that his name was based <gasps> off of his great grandpappy that started the KKK. Get out yeah, of here. Like, what? I was like, wow, this is like wildly offensive for like the beginning of the movie. And then they don't really say anything except he's like, you know, my mama says that sometimes people do things that don't make sense. And that's why she named me Forrest so that I would remember that. And I'm like, no, not good enough. Yeah. And I was just like, doesn't need to be in here. And like his yeah. whole thing of like, oh, they used to wear these white coats and they were ghosts. I was like, this is so offensive. It didn't need to be in there. And then like the flippant, the 60s, 70s, like huge, you know, black movement, the school's being segregated. He gets to a Black Panther party. Yeah. He just doesn't have to deal with it, right? Because that's what Jen <laughs> does. And he's just in the army and he just falls into making a bunch of shrimp and being a millionaire. And I just was like, you know, I don't know. I just, I felt like it was like really, really harsh and I hated it. I really did. Yeah, you're so right though. They really didn't need that like KKK backstory. I almost felt like it was just to be like, see guys, we know about history and Forest misunderstands things. I'm like, but like we we also get that many other times. So I don't get it. I just felt like it's not needed. And if it is needed, you need to address it appropriately. Because first of all, Sally Field, by the way, do you know how much older she is than Tom Hanks? Isn't it like four years, something stupid? Ten years, which I think is like equally. Yeah, no. But she was this kind of like, you know, matriarch that always gave like really good advice. And I I just felt like really that's her advice to that. Like, I just like, I hate it. Moving on. The updated Forrest Gump needs to either address it or not include it. I hope there's never an updated Forrest Gump because I think it would be done so terribly. Yeah. Again, the idea of like, a developmentally delayed man. There's so many movies where the main character has either some type of like very extreme mental health diagnosis or like it's something like this. It's just like, I don't think it's always done great. And again, it's not really always a good representation of like real people, real life because it's kind of exploited. Like yeah. it was in this movie, how like everybody called him stupid. Well, and at this point, actors that are closer to that, that like have that disability, you can pick them to act. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was a lot of messed up stuff in this movie. The mom sleeping with the principal to get him into public school. (gasps) I hated it. What? So much. I hated it. Flames. 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 (laughs) From the side of the face. (laughs) Breathing. Breathing. (laughs) He's in <laughs> I'm gonna start wow. doing that more in like real life, and nobody, <laughs> nobody's gonna know what it is. It's gonna make me so sad. Yeah, why? Why did she have to sleep with him? Why? I don't know because men are disgusting. It was his idea, number one. She did Ew. not go in there with that plan. I will say this, however, not that I condone inappropriate sexual activities for your own gains, but I liked how she was at least advocating for her son because she was like he's gonna get 
get the same treatment as everyone else. I don't care what your stupid numbers say. And honestly, like more parents need to think like that. And so I like how she's coming at it. Like, no, I don't care about your tests. Those are stupid because they were. And I don't know if that was even factual. The whole IQ for a public school thing. I don't really know, to be honest. Okay, this was also the same time that Elvis stayed at their B&B and Forrest gave Elvis his dance moves. So it's like 50s, 60s, right? What a day, yeah. And there's a lot of like big life, crazy traumatic stuff that's just very kind of like easy breezy moving on. The assumption was her dad for Jenny like sexually abused her? Yeah, it was a pedophile was my understanding. Ugh. And also where was Jenny's sister? Because he was like, Jenny and her sister. I'm like, is she okay? Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> we never see her ever. Is she all right? I'm worried. Jenna! Jenna's sister! And like, don't you think it's funny that all she did was tell Forrest to run? And it's like, Jenny, I think you need to run. Like, we need no, to no, get no, you no. out of this. Let's pause there because there is a scene where Forrest goes to her house when she's still living with the dad. And then that's where he kind of reveals like, oh, you know, her dad liked to hug and kiss Ugh, a lot. Yeah. And you're oh, like, I that's just disgusting for us. Thanks for saying it in a very PG way because, you know, we can't handle it and it's horrible. And yeah. then like he sees Jenny and then the dad like drunkenly comes out. They're like, run, run. So now they're running through the cornfield and then she makes him stop. She goes, Boris, come pray with me. What? Why are you stop running? <laughs> You need to run right now because you literally just sprinting for your life for like two <laughs> seconds. And then you're like, hold up. Let's take a pause and like talk to God. I was waiting for the dad to like run into them because what? And he had the bottle. That was really, really creepy. Ugh, I hate it. As we get to like each chapter of this movie, so to speak, there are these moments where I'm like, that's really messed up. Even when she was like, Forrest, they're in college. She's like, have you ever been with a woman? And she like just takes her shirt off and I'm oh like oh my god and she like forces his hand on her boot I know I was like I don't I was like oh are I we that. is he are you forcing him I'm kind of I don't know I know that's how I felt too and then I'm like am I so millennial right now that like every <laughs> I, I've hit the offensive line and it, like you started with KKK and I just immediately thought this entire movie is garbage because of it we're just gonna go ruin the stock market because of her <laughs> hatred <laughs> On from Forrest Gump. Way to go. Bubba Gump shrimp. All your stuff. All your stuff in Everybody Gump. short squeeze Bubba Gump. <laughs> That would oh be God. amazing. <laughs> that would be, oh my Let's God, what do if, it. What if literally that happened? Stop. That, that would be, be so, amazing. so awesome. Wendy, we'd give you some of our profits. I think what you tied back to the like synopsis about him running for his low IQ, whatever. He was like very athletically superior between running the army ping pong in the army. He was like the one who could do the gun. Yes thing the fastest like there was just a lot of things where I was like wow a lot of these things come pretty easily to you buddy and like I yes. guess the point is oh well other things in life don't come as easily and people are rude to him so then other things are like really easy it was difficult because the only like actual intense struggles you saw were people being rude to him yeah we didn't see him like failing tests at school nope. or like losing jobs or like losing money and like we saw like Jenny leave Thing, and that was it. So it's kind of like you just see this guy who keeps like doing really awesome things really easily at anything he tries ever. Well, and that's the thing. It's like you're telling me he never like microwave something metal. Like there's just there wasn't that <laughs> yeah. scene where like something <laughs> dumb happened and you're like, mm -hmm. well, this tracks. Instead, everything perfectly works out. And what is like dumb is he says silly things to presidents and he like he doesn't end at the touchdown online he runs past it and everyone's like ha 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 forest he runs through the marching band very rude don't do that they're there to support you watch out because i'll run you over yeah, and even you think of the army when he's in the army. So again, it's like he does so well in boot camp. Okay, he makes a friend, which is great. And I do like Bubba. I do like him. And then yeah. there's a whole part where they're getting attacked. Yeah. And he runs and he's the fastest runner. So he obviously gets away and he's safe and whatever. And then he's like, I got to go back. And he goes back and he literally saves every yes! single yes! 
person. But like, again, that could have been such a good scene to show like, like, say he didn't even get Bubba or something. Or like, he caused someone else to get like injured. Like that at least I think would have shown some like, I would have hoped character development of him trying to deal with that because I just feel like there weren't a crazy amount of struggles no. he was experiencing no. that most people do experience. Like people make mistakes and like I didn't see a lot of mistakes. So no. Well, and okay, in my opinion, the mistake was you ran back in to get your best friend Bubba and instead saved every other person besides your best friend and gets yeah. to your last best friend and your best friend's dying. Yeah. And I'm not gonna be mean, but <laughs> part of me thinks, well, why didn't you go after Bubba first? I know that's mean because people are flying there, but like I don't think Bubba could have been saved though. He he was uh he was pretty pretty bad. Pretty shape. messed up. Don't you love how in that scene literally Lieutenant Dan is on the phone the entire time? Like he was like a little teenage girl on the phone. He never <laughs> let go of the phone. I'm like, how many things could you be saying? Like, can't you just say, like, we're in this area, we're getting attacked, help us and hang up and then use your gun to shoot? Like, he literally never used a gun in that whole fighting nothing. It was so crazy. And even when Force found him, he was holding the phone. I don't know what the phone was attached to, by the way. <laughs> so I don't know how that made sense or worked. So, as a kid, Bubba was like really fun and that was like a fun character, but he doesn't really have a lot of screen time. But Lieutenant Mm-mm. Dan has a ton of screen time. Yes. He like follows him into other chapters in life and yeah. ends up at the wedding. Right. Well, I felt like Bubba was, he was so, he was very similar to forest in the sense that i think people thought he was like not smart i guess yeah but it was in a different way like he kind of to me came off you know he had very uh special interest in shrimp and it didn't matter what we're talking about it's gonna come back to shrimp you know so i felt (laughs) like he had some different challenges there everything came easy to forest you're right that's the theme and it was Kind of annoying because even when he's recovering from his something bit me in my oh butt, my he now becomes a national ping pong or no, an international ping pong star, which you're like, what? I didn't remember Why? where in the movie that part fell because I remember there was something about ping pong, but like, so he's still in the army. He's recovering. They were like, oh, you're bored at the hospital here and just keep your eye on the ball. And that's- But then it was like when he did all the international stuff he was still in the army yeah because then there's a part where after all that they're like hey you're being discharged yeah discharge guy do you're telling me this guy saves a whole platoon or whatever the heck we call it and you're not gonna send him back i don't believe that army i don't because i think you guys would have sent him right back immediately that's what you guys do really i see i thought everybody has to like fill out their four or five years commitment no i'm saying i think they would have sent him back to vietnam oh like i don't believe that they were like nah let's just let our best soldier play ping pong yeah what else? Like, I don't believe that. And, like, it was another weird kind of segue where I was like, what's the point? Yeah. Is it just well, to tie him into, like, more... Uh, I, I think it tied him into getting back... He always had to get to a presidential office. Well, I was gonna say, that was that was Nixon, right? Was that yeah. when he... And then he was magically the deep throat <laughs> <laughs> informant in Watergate. <laughs> I, I laughed out loud because it was so absurd. It's so absurd. It I laughed so loudly getting crazier part of me was like i didn't realize he was still in the army so i was like what the flip isn't he going and doing the shrimping stuff for bubba we're just futzing around playing ping pong are you <laughs> kidding me you could do this at the ymca get over it but then i realized he was still in the army so i was like okay but like you could have cut that whole part out and yeah. i don't think you would have missed anything well and i think the purpose besides whatever american i don't know political thing was happening was he had money from ping pong to then buy the boat oh you know what that's true that's true so maybe that was purposeful because his mom was like some man wants you to say that this paddle is better for twenty five thousand was that like a like korean dictator or something i i don't know who that well we gotta look that one up yeah, we should probably look it up because i probably just was super racist right now assuming that so please do all i know is there were cardboard cutouts of him that were life-size and all of them his eyes were closed <laughs> 
podcast. <laughs> and it was, that was funny. Because <laughs> we all know someone who always has their eyes closed in photos. Pretty and much. it's our cousin Shane. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely cousin Shane. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't find this as fast as I wanted to. So he he did. He got money from that. Okay. And then there's a part where in his ping pong escapades, oh. that's where he sees Lieutenant Dan again in New York City. Yes. And it's like the holidays and whatever. I was actually surprised how friendly Lieutenant Dan was to him. Because the last time we saw him, he was like threatening his life in the hospital for he saving him. Because he said he should have died in combat which is very sad i felt so bad for lieutenant dan i was like you have been misled yeah. by our country to believe that your destiny is to die stupidly so don't do that well and like your platoon died and you're the leader that would be hard i think for anyone to live with because that's just really really tough but his whole thing was like i should have died because everyone else in my family died in a war yeah i know i know that's your standard is like yeah you have to die in a war like that's so horrible Oh my yeah. god don't do that no i agree i got the sense that when he finally met up with forrest he was still like i still hate you but like i'm now a little bit more like what did he say he's like i love off the government and he just is drinking and he's just yeah new year's eve and he's just like Bleh. but then he defended him when that one lady called him stupid he was very yeah. very angry and i was like yes lieutenant dan that's right support your friends i was actually like like a little surprised that he defended him right away because again like you pointed out we just saw him try to kill him in the middle of the night but so. i think they had like like i think forrest like literally stayed with him for a couple days because he okay. was like it's the holidays so to me i was like okay is it like christmas like is that yeah. what's happening and then it was new year's so i was like that's like a week of hanging out with lieutenant dan mm. and are you guys friends i don't know but i just wrote lieutenant dan is the worst New Year's Eve friend to go to a party with. <laughs> He's so angry. We've all felt like Lieutenant Dan at least one year on New Year's <laughs> Eve. You're just sitting there and you're just like, I don't know what's happening, but it's the new year. <laughs> wait, wait, we gotta go back though to, I think it's that Watergate, whatever, and the Vietnam protest. Oh my is God. There. And I have to tell you, the guy you mentioned who was cursing. Okay, who was that? I don't know and I don't know if we should know. Okay. I didn't know if it was a real person that I was like, shame on me for not knowing someone can school us if okay. we're wrong hopefully you can let us know but he's wearing this like giant american flag shirt oh i know and forrest points it out he's like that man was wearing an american <laughs> flag and i was like yes forrest look how dumb that looks isn't that stupid could you imagine when a bunch of people worship it like cult members how crazy is that so weird don't do that <laughs> But isn't it weird that it was basically the liberal party that's like <laughs> anti-Vietnam and like yeah. the government is lying and he's wearing this big American shirt. And I'm like, well, a couple months ago we had Republican Party yahoos going into the Capitol with big American shirts. And I'm like, what the hell is happening, Forrest? Okay, so what I thought was happening when he was like, I was just walking around D.C. and there's <laughs> a lot of people. And then he gets like roped into that line of people who just got the bus. I thought that was like a very excitable tour group and then I realized <laughs> it was for the anti-war protest but like why did he go on stage why was he the one on stage a part of me thinks that they were like wow you're a soldier that doesn't believe in the vietnam war we're doing this big protest you should speak about your experience and so okay. they kind of took advantage of him like i think she thought oh you're perfect uh -huh. because he was there but didn't really like ask him and so he yeah. was like oh, okay i'm perfect but when he goes to speak there's some general in the corner that takes all the mics out <laughs> yeah I love it. This is when I started to not like Jenny mm. because a part of me was like, he just kept finding her and she just kept being like, Forrest, I'm making out in the car. Leave me alone. And then she's like, touch my boob. And then she's like, Forrest, I'm, I'm singing <laughs> naked at the club. I want to be famous. Forrest, leave me alone. And then you're telling me Forrest is on the stage with thousands of people. And guess who shows up? Jenny. Mm. She's the star. Alabama. She's going Could you imagine <laughs> if he, if he was like, well, Jenny, you told me not to bother with you so you better run back into the crowd y'all <laughs> that would have been a twist but that 
annoying me because I was like, of course you're going to come out and everyone's going to cheer because you came back together where I really just wish you were nicer because he wrote you letters in Vietnam and we don't know where they were going because you're just on a bus and in San Francisco and no one knows where Jenny was. What's her address? I love how he was like, I'll write you. I'm like, but, but like to where? Because she literally <laughs> just got a car with a stranger. By the way, if this was like a real story, Jenny would have literally been murdered as Definitely. a hitchhiker because I'm pretty sure that's how a lot of women were murdered Definitely. during that time period, which is so scary. Don't ever hitchhike. She was like, ah, she kind of used him. A I bit. think she did. And yeah, and I, and I just feel like he was like, I want to marry you. And she was like, no. And then I don't know. Then she gets sick and is like, okay, I guess you'll do. And then I won't tell you you had a kid. I mean, yikes. Well, and so she died of HIV. Is that right? They actually don't say anything. Oh. About what it is, but they oh. allude to it because of like the timing. The, and they did, they, she was like, nobody knows what it is yet. Yeah. And that was like early 80s. Yeah. So, okay. So I totally just assumed. Well, and that's what a, a lot of people like, I think that was kind of part of it. I read that the author was like, it was actually hepatitis C or something. And I'm like, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> might as well just go for the big one i mean well, and i'm just like i mean she clearly had to have sex with forrest to have a kid well i was thinking about that i'm like is there like communicable diseases happening because like yeah. you can transfer that to a baby too sometimes um anyway Not we'll never know in that <laughs> sense. but yeah it you know and again like i think the point was to be like oh you know jenny's life is so sad it's just so sad if only she was with forrest her life would be wonderful and then like at the end you're kind of like okay it is but that's it but like yeah i know i just and i get it she grew up really rough and she just, she didn't have somebody taking care of her, right? And so mm -hmm. it's just all about her making these decisions. Like she wanted to commit suicide. She got hooked on cocaine and right. We just keep seeing yeah. her in different phases, being with abusive boyfriends. Like, I don't know. It just was like. Very self-destructive. Very self-destructive. So I think there's a part of me that probably could be like nicer to her. But like most of our movie characters, she just could have benefited from a therapist. Yes. You know, said it once, I'll say it again. We all need to go to therapy and if you don't need to go to therapy then you definitely need to go to therapy a hundred percent so yeah life could have been different but now lieutenant dan had a different form of therapy yo which was being the crow's yes. nest of a bubba gump shrimp boat i'm not gonna lie i didn't hate his character arc even though it was kind of like religious like it was alluding to like he found the lord and whatever i didn't hate I, kinda, I didn't hate it either. I kind of liked it because it was just, it was a story of someone who, again, they go most of their life thinking, this is how it's going to play out for me. Yeah. That changes as yeah. many things in life do. And then he had to learn how to live with it instead of just giving up. And he did learn how to live with it. And it took a while and he had to do a bunch of different things. But I liked it. And I liked how he, you know, again, he was like, oh, yeah, oh, shrimping captain. Yeah, I'll be your first me and then he literally rolls up in the dock he's like all right i guess it'll be a friend's mate <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't have even showed up, I don't think. That's very impressive of you. I love it. Oh my god. Yeah. But okay, another kind of problematic piece to the shrimp boating is that the only reason they did well is everyone's boat destroyed in a hurricane. Okay. So now Forrest is a millionaire again. Yeah. What? A, what yeah. What? See, that another detail I didn't remember. I thought him and Lieutenant Dan just found the shrimp. <laughs> I thought they just found the magic shrimp spot. Me too. I thought they found like a secret area. And it was like, no. so wait, let me get this. This is where I think people alluded to this, I don't know, conservative piece of, you know, get rid of your competition. <laughs> it's like, literally the competition was. Sink their boats with a hurricane. So yeah. Again, guys, oh. bubblegum shrimp on um, the stock trade <laughs> number is BG. <laughs> BS. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And then he's like, and then Lieutenant Dan invested in some fruit company and it was like <laughs> Apple. And he's like, so now I'm a quadrillionaire and they told me I don't need to worry about money. And well, that's one less thing to worry about. And I'm like, <laughs> but Forrest, you also like have a nice house. Like that was a nice house. I'm just saying. I was like, this is nice. Yeah. Well, and it's like a B&B. &B, so it's huge, right? Right. Yeah. So I was like, so you have a nice house and 
and you already had a bunch of money from other stuff, I believe. So everything's great again. He does have a cute line though. He says, mama says you only need so much money and then the rest is showing off. And then it just shows him like giving money away to all these different people. So he, when he was the shrimping boat, he was like, I decided to go to church. And then he's like, and Lieutenant Dan sometimes it comes here like, okay, I guess we'll see like a quick, you know, they're in the, um, like Baptist, it was a Baptist church. Yeah, it was like an old black church. And so you just think he's going to be sitting in the pews. No, no, he's in the choir. <laughs> what? This is like Sister Act style. He's literally in the choir. Why did he join the choir? He could have just gone There's to no be a spectator. Way. There's no way he could sing. <laughs> no, I don't even think he was. I was like, this is this. I don't believe. Of all the tall tales you told me, I do not believe this one. Oh my- so he gives them money. He gave a hospital money, which I wasn't sure if that was the army hospital or what, but it was some hospital. And then he gave Bubba's family yeah. all the rest, which was nice. Yeah. Wealthy white men, you should do that. Yeah. More of you. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you're upset and offended by our stock market jokes, then you definitely should give away more of your money because get a life. There's more important things happening. So, okay. And Anyway. Okay, in my opinion, like after the army is when I started to like not hate this movie as much because you started to get like more momentum. And, you know, then his mom passes away. That was sad. And that's what shoots him off to start running. Well, no. Uh-uh. Oh, no. What did I get no. wrong? No. Well, first his mom passes away. Okay. Then he's like alone at the house, but Jenna comes. Oh, and yes. And he sees Jenna and then they kind of bond and then they have sexy time and then literally the next morning she pieces out but she makes the bed before she pieces out so i don't really (laughs) get that i just feel like that's a little out of character but fine (laughs) and that's what makes him start running because he's super sad and he had to process his grief so that was how he did it i honestly i don't know why because i am not a runner and i will probably never be i've tried it it's just not for me but i just for some reason i really love the running metaphors they they hit me they hit me in the feelies what like what do you mean just in general i guess that whole concept of like because it again it can be something where it can start off that you're running away from something but then it can turn into instead you then start to run towards something Ooh. and i felt like that's kind of what happened with him yeah. you know he started because he was running away from his sadness and then it just kind of turned into like a way to help him cope and handle it and then he just got to a point where he was like okay now i don't need it anymore yeah and it wasn't like he ended up in a certain destination yeah. necessarily he just was in some random place and he was like "Eh, now I'm done now I'm okay again I love that you know I love that yeah but how about all of the million dollar ideas he gives along the way what that made me laugh and it also just made me laugh that like random people just joined in I was like oh my word it's like again some people are just really hungry to join a cult and you know they were like I guess I'll be I'll do this one I don't know is some guy running and he looks like the guy from Castaway, let me do it. And I just think that's really funny. <laughs> I mean, he did have the cult leader look. He had like the big long beard, yeah. the long hair, unshowered, yeah. unshowered, <laughs> not really speaking. Right. You know, right. So, but he basically created what we use every day in our text messages the smiley face emoji. I mean, get out of here. Yeah. Who knew? Okay. Let's see. Then we start to get into like the real tough stuff at the end where he finds out he's got a little kid. Oh, that I, the waterworks. You didn't cry at that? I did when he like asked, is the kid smart? Oh, I know. That got me. That got me. You know, because it gets me because again, I feel like there's not a lot of times where he as a character is so super emotional in terms of like crying yeah. even when his mom died I don't even think we saw him cry because it was kind of like an off screen he was just like she died and you're like oh I'm sad are you sad okay yeah he kind of was like that with Bubba actually now that I think about it but yeah. not to that level yeah and just thinking like oh did I like ruin my kid's life just by being his dad and you're like that's so sad because I actually feel like a lot of parents maybe do think like that sometimes because again I think of people who have like a mental health diagnosis 
diagnosis or if you do have a developmental delay or even a physical, you know, ailment or things like that, you know, sometimes there's genetics. So, yeah. oh sad. I know it was sad. I mean, but what's the kid's name? Haley Joel. Haley Joel Osmond. Haley Joel Osmond. This was his first movie. Oh, really? As a little tyke. Wow. He's a cute kid. They were pretty stinking cute together. Yeah. But they're like fishing together and they got the same little shirts. And their little hats. Their little bubble uh, hats. Yeah. Oh. I mean, ugh. I don't know. I, I just was annoyed. Why didn't Jenny say she had a kid? Like, why did you wait that long? You never see Forrest be like, wow, that's pretty messed up. You didn't let me know I had a kid. And I get it because he's not super intellectual. But like, at the same time, it's like... I got the impression that when he met the kid, it was like shortly after he stopped running. How long was it again, Bridge? It was three, three years, years, two months, 14 days, 16 hours. And if he would have started in Alabama, he'd ended up in Utah. Okay. Oh, Okay. 171 days later sorry <laughs> okay so like if he was theoretically running for three years and then she gave birth somewhere nine months in there so that would be two years six months four days no <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what it'd be <laughs> with the revolver um, in the conservatory but- <laughs> Mrs. Blake yes but like I just got the sense it was shortly after he stopped running which to me made a little more sense because I was like oh. oh he literally wasn't available to talk oh. to because he was in travel oh I'm seeing it so different now she's like i was following you for a time newspaper clippings like oh, i really had to tell you something and i really could find you that gave me castaway vibes i was like what are you helen hunt get out of here <laughs> jeez you and your scrapbooks come on yeah, this was the same director for castaway so what is robert zemeckis trying to tell us about women do they only scrapbook <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> they worship their ex boyfriends who are Tom Hanks and they scrapbook. That's, that's the message I'm getting. He's like, How do I get Tom Hanks to look like Bear Grylls? Okay, we're gonna run for yeah. three years. Okay. It's like, Hey, Tom, I got a new movie. Spoiler alert, you're gonna have to grow a really big beard. Tom Hanks is like, I'm so so hungry why can i just eat i got choked up again i was kind of like wow this movie is some like a little bit of messed up stuff so i think i was a little harsher to it but when he's at jenny's grave after she passes away and he's like you know little forrest wrote you a letter and he said i couldn't read it so i'm leaving it here i'm like oh forrest is actually like a better dad than like <laughs> i feel like most I parents know. would like read that letter I was like, and, that's really uh, sweet and then the bus stop and like and that's the theme right then we're back at the bus stop right he ends the movie kind of because in the beginning there's this weird cgi feather that you know it's just like there and then there's no other feather symbolism throughout the whole movie yeah. until the very end where he's back at the bus stop and there's this little feather but he makes this whole speech that's basically saying are our lives determined by a destiny or is it all accidental like floating on a breeze and so I think it's supposed to leave you I guess with that thought is everybody's life planned out already or is it possible that things can be random and change and I don't think the movie helped me know the answer to be honest (laughs) I, I'm still not sure of what I'm supposed to think. I mean, if it's your destiny, then you and I are going to be playing ping pong in China soon. Wow. And then we'll get cardboard cutouts <laughs> of ourselves. <laughs> awesome. Okay, this movie, 1994, when it came out, it was bigger than The Lion King <gasps> that came out in the same like time period, won six Oscars. I'm sorry, Wendy. I don't know if it would get six Oscars today. I'm so sorry. I, I just... Yeah, uh, I think it would depend. I mean, I will say Tom Hanks, he is very good. Oh, he's so good. He's so awesome. And honestly, I felt like all the actors were really good. Yeah, nobody was distracting or, no. or just besides the lady on the bench, which was your Bob scene. Yeah, well, she did not win an Oscar. <laughs> pretty sure. So that was a good decision. Oh my god. I think if this movie was on TV, I would kind of watch it and and hope it was the second half. If somebody said, what do you want to watch? I don't know if I'd ever pick Forrest Gump. I'm so sorry, Wendy. I'm so sorry. So Bridge, you said for Forrest Gump, we were going to get a different kind of quote, a special quote. Oh yeah. We got a fan quote. (gasps) Oh! Our fan is Wendy. Wendy. You know, she texted me about 50 times on how do I record and send an audio, but she did it. Okay. (laughs) That's good. She too did it and she sent it. 
All right. So this is our special quote from Wendy, who also picked this movie. So let's do it. Hi, Bridget and Katie. This is Wendy. Um, I first want to start out by saying that I absolutely love your podcast. I have so much fun listening to you to (gasps) dissect all of these movies, most of which I have seen and listening to your take on uh, the movies. And so I think that's amazing. So a couple points for Forrest Gump. The first time I watched this movie was in the movie theaters with my mom back in 1994. And um, I just remember being kind of odd at how much I liked the movie, how engrossed I got in the characters, and really like how much I loved Forrest. Secondly, I remember thinking to myself, what a weird name. No one would ever actually name their child Forrest. And of course, there's the whole backlash of, you know, they're from the South. And so, of course, you're part of the Ku Klux Klan plan because that's what happens when you move to the south fast forward i live in north carolina i come down here and Ugh. guess what i start meeting all of these people named Forrest. so i have a hard time disassociating that with what the movie showed as that name but i think the biggest thing that i absolutely love about Forrest is just his simplistic view on life and how he doesn't he just doesn't have fear to stop him from going after the things he wants to do. He likes to play ping pong, he becomes a champion. He likes to run, he, you know, makes it to the pro All-American team and meets the president, which he doesn't really care about, he just likes the Dr. Pepper. True. (laughs) You know, he decides that he's gonna fulfill, you know, the shrimp boat captain, and he becomes Bubba Gump Shrimp and CEO and founder. And, you know, money, what's that mean? What do we care about money? It's just one less thing to worry about. So there's so many quotable things that go on in this movie. Everybody's life's like, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. So you've heard that a million times. But I think I just, I just love how he walks through life. And I think that's what makes the movie here. And obviously there's so many great actors and actresses that are along the way. And everyone has to love Jenny and her struggle at um, healing and peace and you know and um who doesn't cry when he's talking to her grave anyhow i am looking forward to listening to this episode and i uh, hope you ladies pick some more good ones see you later bye oh, oh wendy doesn't she sound like the best boss ever yeah she's a peach why don't you adopt her as your always boss <gasps> oh my god <laughs> as like a traveling boss to different jobs like wherever oh. you go she just is always your boss automatically oh my gosh you thought dissected the movie yeah how sweet and fun and like jenny, jenny. healing and peace my heart that was a very sweet way to say that <gasps> even talk about forest she's like he just sees life in a very simple way and that's kind of nice and now oh. i'm like that is kind of nice dang it I wendy should have listened to this before the episode <laughs> <laughs> it's like we hate it on forest she's gonna be so angry and then i'm gonna be like wendy i'm so sorry i failed the test you win I mean, <laughs> too much on him, but she had a softer approach to it. Oh. Wendy, you the bomb.com. Thank you. We love you. Backslash absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. That's so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Kate, self-care, February, and you got the last pick, right? Yes. I have been thinking so much about my pick because it's a very unique opportunity for me to decide for myself. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I know you don't like this, but I do want to have you kind of, I want you to pick a genre. Oh, okay. 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 So I won't tell you what's in it, but there's literally three picks that I'm like between. Ooh. Okay, well, what are the options? So the first one is an action adventure sci-fi. Okay. Another is one that I don't think you'll like, but it's a very tame one of your least favorites. It is considered a horror, but also kind of like a thriller. Okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then the third is family friendly. Okay, Kate, I'm going to surprise you. Okay. We're going horror. <gasps> 
Oh, Bridge. Okay, you won't be disappointed. I've built up a tolerance, and I, I feel like while besides this podcast, I will never watch scary movies. <laughs> it is self care <laughs> for February, and I give this to you. Okay, you have definitely seen this movie. You know, some people actually don't even think this movie is scary at all, which is very oh. interesting. It seems to be a very big divide on if it's either absolutely terrifying or like it's soups boring. Oh, this movie came out in 1999, and oh. actually now that I'm looking at it a little closer, it's classified as a horror mystery, which sure. <laughs> hmm. okay. So we are going to go in the woods. We're going to go camping. Ooh. We're going to watch the very groundbreaking for <gasps> its time oh. horror movie, The Blair Witch Project. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Are you one that thinks this is absolutely <laughs> horrifying? <so> Wait, but I'm excited because I have so much to say about it. And there really is like such a big divide on this movie. Ooh, I didn't think you'd feel that way. I thought this would be tame. Listen, when I watched this, I obviously was a lot younger, so maybe it won't seem as scary. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it because, you know, I don't think I watched this when it came out because I was eight. Wow. So I definitely didn't watch it. Let's hope not. So I watched it when I was older. And then obviously, I don't know what age exactly but i think being older i kind of saw it differently and also this is what they consider one of the first movies that's like a documentary style so there's a oh. lot about that where it was like oh this is the first like found footage movie and like now there's a billion yeah yeah so woo! Whew. and big thanks to wendy yes thank you wendy <laughs> wendy let's hope you uh, weren't really mad that we <laughs> called out some things that didn't <laughs> Set well, settle well Listen. in 2021, but I mean, you can keep running to this movie, that's for sure. I just kept running. And Bridge, I gotta say, if you were Bubba and you got shot in the jungle, I would... <laughs> Go save you first. Oh. And then maybe save other people. But <laughs> I'd save you first. Kate, if we went to a New Year's Eve party and I was feeling like <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, I would just leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Bridge. That's, that's love right there. I know, right? <laughs> And listeners, if you also love us and Lieutenant Dan and Ice Cream, you should leave us a review. This, this accent isn't it's working. Like, where are we going with this It's not accent? working. I'm quitting it. You should leave us a review. We love reviews. We love written reviews. You can review us on Apple Podcasts. And also, you know, check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com. You can email us on there. You can read more about us. You can listen to some episodes if you'd like. And you can also request some movies. So Wendy picked this movie and our movie prior, or not prior directly to this, but when we did Castaway, that was also a fan pick. And if you want to be a fan and you want to pick, well, shoot, yeah. fill out the form. It's the front of our page. You just got to scroll down with the scrolly. I've actually had some people be like, where is it? Guys, it's a website. Just like scroll we should on move down. It to the top, Kate. We should just move it to the top. Literally every website you have to scroll, so I am confused why <laughs> other people are confused. Anyway, we love you all, <laughs> even though you don't follow directions well <laughs> sometimes. Okay, listeners, when we say goodbye for Forrest Gump, I want you all to envision Katie and I on the Chene Bubba Gump boat, waving the way Forrest <gasps> waves at Lieutenant Dan. That's us saying goodbye to you. We have rubber arms. I love it. The arms <laughs> are flying. We love you. We love you it's so, so much. It's so wavy. We love you. We'll see y'all next week. We're going to go camping for the Blair Witch so Project. Scared. It's going to be awesome. Bring your tents. Oh, God. We'll see you there. Don't lose the map. Okay. I love you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Sisters Who Seen It. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com where you can email us, request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week!